Hey there, my gorgeous friends on the internet, and welcome to part two of the React series for losers, because that's what we are. Welcome to the team. You're a loser yourself. Please take a seat right here. We usually cry between 5 p.m. and 9 p.m. every day, so make sure you join us. Okay, so in this part, I want to actually go away from this crappy code that we have here, because this is not how we write React code. So... We're going to take a look at JSX and in the next video in part three, we're going to take a look on how we can set up React from absolute scratch. So you know what the hell is going on. Okay. So what do I have here? Just to clarify, just in case you haven't watched your video, the first one, shame on you. Um, the, the first one, uh, what we talked about is, well, we have a main here, a HTML main, and basically what React does is we write J JavaScript code, we generate everything here, and then we just kind of render out our code and insert it in here. But the way we wrote it was kind of terrible. So what we had here, ignore this console.clear, but we just made a function called app, and here we use create, create element to render out a div, and then we use the array here to render out more items like this create element button, create element button, and create element a p tag, right? And this is the result that we have. And at the end, we just use React DOM to render out the whole app, okay? But this approach looks kind of weird and kind of crappy. So how can we make this better and easier? Well, we can use something called JSX. And what JSX allows us to do is write HTML-like code, but behind the scenes, it actually takes that HTML looking code and transforms it into this. Okay. So how can we transform our HTML looking code without writing this create element crap? Well, we can use Babel and what Babel allows you us to do again is it's going to automatically take our JSX code and turns it into kind of like vanilla react code, uh, I should say. So how does JSX code even look like in the first place? Well, we need to add it in CodePen first. So go here to settings. Again, make sure you have the React libraries, so React and React DOM. And here on the JavaScript processor, you can use Babel. Okay, so how does it, how can we clean this up? Well, first of all, let's just rewrite it here. So I'm just going to say function app. I'm going to do the same thing like that. And rather than writing... Well, we still need to return something. So let's just return here. Rather than writing react create element, what we can do is we can just add a simple div. Again, this is JSX code. And again, behind the scenes, what happens when you write this div is Babel is going to take this piece of code and it's going to turn it into this. Okay, but we don't have to write it anymore. So we can get rid of this whole thing and simplify this code up here to this. So stop saying this, Ed. So we have a div, then we have two buttons. So we can just add a button. I'm going to do it here because it completes it faster. Click me. Okay. I'm going to do this again. Two click me's. And then we have a paragraph that says zero. So I can just literally cut this out and paste it in here. If it would format it nicely for me. Like that. And that's it. I can get rid of this whole thing just like that. And voila, magic, we are still good. So now this is a component here. We render out some HTML. Again, it's not HTML, it's JSX because it turns the code into that JavaScript react create element thing. But look at that. It looks nice. It looks simple and I love it. What we can also do here to simplify this is we don't need to use react create element anymore. What we can do is we can just render this thing out as a component. And this is how you would do that. All right, so it kind of looks like a HTML tag. Now, what's the benefit of this? Let, let, let's wait for this to load up. Hopefully it should work. Actually, I think I need to close it here. Oh, HTML skills are so bad. Did I name this app? Yes, I did. Okay, so it works out. Okay, so this is how it looks. And this is how you're gonna see components look like. Because what we can do, what's the advantage of using this is we can create other functions, so other components, and we can divide our app in small little portions. So the, the thing this is useful for is maybe I want the nav. So I want to have a website and I want to have a nav. So I can create a specific component for this. I can say function nav. 
like that. And what do you, what would you have in the nav? Let's just return something here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write it here and then just copy paste it. I cannot speak today. I'm not sure why. I apologize. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, so a simple nav, maybe with like a H1 with the ID of logo or something. I'm just going to write logo here. And then maybe a UL. And here you would have some LIs. Home. Contact. About. You would probably have an A tag as well, but let's just keep it like this. So I'm just going to cut everything from the nav here and paste it in here. All right, so I have a nav component now with all the necessary things. However, you are going to see that it's not rendered out here on the screen. Why is that? Why is our nav not showing up here? Well, if we take a look, we only render out our function app. Okay, so here's our function app. It has the click me and the zero. If we take a look down here, React DOM render, we're only rendering out that component. So you might be like, well, this is a problem. I can only render out one component at the time. So I made this nav, but I cannot use it. So how are we gonna do about it? How, how do you structure React code? Well, what you do is you have one big baseline component, in this case, app. And what you can do is in this app, you can add smaller components. So you can pretty much imagine you have your app component and in that app component, you have smaller ones. You add a nav, you add a first page, a home page, an about page component, and you can just stack them together. So rather than writing all your JSX here, I should say, is you can get rid of this thing and you can use this component that, that she created. And how do you do that? Well, the same way we did it down here in the render. So now in the app, I can just add the nav like that. So whatever name I have here as the function, I can just write nav like that, uppercase, because we wrote it uppercase, right? And that's it. So now we render out our nav, everything in there. And you can create another function to render out another component. And this becomes really powerful because you can segment your code and you can create a specific, a specific file for your nav, a specific file for your home, and you just import them in this big main app component. Okay, so this is kind of how the workflow goes. You create these smaller components and you add them in your one big app. And finally, you render out that one big app in here. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. Uh, but yeah, you can technically add more like just JSX here, uh, but this gets kind of messy after a while. So if you just do your whole thing here, you don't want to do that. Do we get the hello? We get the hello. Okay. So anyway, this is the power. This is the power of React. Now, some small quirks that I want to talk about before we move on to part three is, let's see, we have two components. So we have a, a nav, and let's say we have our home page. So I'm just going to go all the way down here and let's create another one. Function home. All right. This is our main screen. Again, here we just return some JSX. So here I'm going to say div. I'm just going to write it here. Div. Um, we have, let's say we have a big title here. Join our magic club. And we also have maybe a, what else do we have? Maybe we have a picture. I don't want to find the picture right now. Let's just keep it simple. A subtitle that says, Harry Potter Geeks Rejoice. And a button to buy our, okay, that's good. So let me just copy this whole thing, paste it in here. And now to render it out, again, you can just go up to your main component and we can just add home here. Like that. That's it. Super simple. Boom. Now you can style this. And again, we're going to have a, a specific episode on different ways you can style React code because there's multiple versions there. And I don't want to kind of overload you with information right now. I want to keep it simple and I, wanna, I want you to really understand what's going on. Now there's there are a few small quirks in JSX that I want to let you know before I go. First one, you're gonna, you might have this issue of maybe I don't want to wrap this in a div, right? I just want to keep it simple like this, like that. 
all right no dev and as you can see that doesn't really work in code pen it doesn't give me an error but when we set up our project it should basically this will not work because if you think back to what this transpiles to or transposes to is that react.create element and what you need to keep in mind is you always need to have one parent div that's wrapping your content around so in this case here I need this nav to wrap around. I cannot have basically elements sitting next to each other like this. So like a H1 sitting next to UL, sitting next to blah, blah, blah. You need to have like one big parent div that contains everything else. Because again, that kind of transpiles to react.createElement div, and then you have an array of your objects, right? But there, there is a way you can avoid this. So Again, if you don't want to have a div that's going to be rendered out in your HTML, is you can use this weird ass syntax that React came up with, which is going to be called a fragment. Does it work here? Yeah, it works here. So again, what this allows us to do is if we take a look at the elements here, I'm not sure where this renders out. Here, body, we have main, okay? So we have nav and we have the div, right? So this works. So that fragment is actually not showing up as a rendered div or a rendered whatever. It's kind of like some magic code behind it. Okay. So again, you need to use this in case you don't want to have a div wrapping your content around. Again, this can be for styling reasons, for whatever reason you don't have, you don't want to have a div wrapping things around. So if I do that, you're going to see that the div actually shows up now. Uh, I keep messing this up. I keep pressing the insert button and it's messing up my code. Okay. Where, where is you? The baby's crying. I don't have a baby. Or do I? I, I don't. But the baby's crying. So as you can see, now it's wrapped around this div. Okay. Because again, you can, okay, it's clear enough. You understand. You cannot have basically components or JSX lying next to each other. It needs to be wrapped. So in this case, we don't need this div. So I'm just going to leave an empty fragment here because these are the only two components I need to render out. Wow, you're so long-winded. Long okay, so there we go. Uh, what else issues that you might encounter? If you want to add a class name, a class, not the class name, in HTML, you would add a class like this, class equals whatever. Well, here, since we are working with JavaScript, class is actually a reserved keyword. We cannot use it because you can create class, classes. So they rename this. If you want to actually use classes, you can say class name like that. And I can say, uh, Wow. So here we can go in CSS. I can add a wow and I can add a color of blue. And it's blue. Wow. <laughs> okay. So again, it doesn't work with normal class just because it collides with JavaScript class keyword. Okay. There we go. Should we leave this blue? I think we're going to leave this blue. Okay, so that's kind of a basic introduction here to kind of get us going. Next step, we're going to set this all up in VS Code from scratch before we actually move on to more complicated topics, uh, just because CodePen is kind of messy. And yeah, I'm not a big fan of it. So again, next episode, we're going to talk about setting things up. And, and the next, next one, uh, we're going to talk about more advanced React things, basics, not advanced. Nothing is advanced yet. We don't know. And we might also do a little nice project that you're going to like. Okay. Until next time, give me a kiss. Hope you like my new haircut. It's been super expensive. I regret every part of it, but it's okay. Love you all. Okay. Goodbye.